As a doctor, if I have a patient who has epilepsy, I can send them to the neurologist and I know that they're gonna get really good care. But for the kids that I was seeing who were having physical and neurologic issues because of the trauma that they were experiencing, there was no response. In Bayview Hunters Point, where we do our work, we're dealing with really little kids and they're exposed to domestic violence in the home and homelessness and violence in the community. Kids who are exposed to that over and over and over again, it actually has effects on their long-term health. They're way more at risk of having heart disease, chronic lung disease, and cancer. And that was the reason why we created the Center for Youth Wellness. So uh, welcome to our implementation meeting. We provide direct services for families to heal kids exposed to toxic stress. The canary in the coal mine is behavior. You want to listen? Yeah. You... I see it in clinic when a child is three years old, and Susie sees it as a prosecutor when the kid is 14. As a former prosecutor, I recognized that if you don't address exposure to chronic adversity, there will certainly be public safety consequences, there will be poor performance in school, and ultimately, you're either engaging in violent behavior or you're a victim of violent behavior. Step one is screening every child for adverse childhood experiences, and the pediatrician's office is absolutely the place where that screening should be happening. We have a checklist that we use in clinic. Has your child ever witnessed violence either at home or in the community? Is there anything that your child has had to deal with, like having a parent who was incarcerated? One of our CYW wellness coordinators is able to go out to the home, assess the needs of the parents, and start making sure that they can get connected to the services that they need. Dr. Burke was able to recognize some challenges that my grandson was going through. One of the problems was an absentee father, and this was coming out in a lot of behavior and some issues that he was having. Can I get a hug? If Dr. Burke hadn't noticed it and come to me and talked to me, he wouldn't be where he is today. He's an honor roll student. He's getting ready to graduate from school. It's the 28th that we're talking about? So we've got the clinical team, which is composed of psychologists and a team of psychiatrists. We have a research team. And then the third leg of the stool is really my passion, which is policy and advocacy. You know, the, 27 families yeah. that we have. the kind of work that Dr. Burke Harris is doing is incredibly innovative. I mean, she's really thought through how do you bring a variety of players together to really meet the needs of children and families. Dr. Nadine Burke Harris. Our mission here is to make sure that every single one of these kids in the room has every opportunity to be whatever it is they want to be, do whatever it is they want to do, our kids deserve that chance.